Hey, Shalom. First off, I would like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash, Yahweh who the world ignorantly calls God, Yahweh Shai who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. I want to give a double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone who has taught me this truth. I want to give a peace and blessings to the Akim across the four corners of the earth who teach this truth from which I like to do so. Lord willing, this video is edifying. Lord willing, brothers, get something from this video. Uh, basically, what's going to be about, man, is uh, <clears throat> prophecy, you know, and uh, prophecy that Ezra was seeing, you know, with as far as martial law, you know, race wars and things of that nature. Because understand that, and I always say this is a book of, this book tells you what happens in the, be happened in the beginning, what, what happened in the beginning, what's happening in the present time, and what's to come. Okay, this book has prophecies in it. And, you know, the prophets were called what? Seers. They were able to, to, to prophesy things that was going to happen. And as we know it, and as the looks of it, in this chapter, and the reason why I'm bringing it out is because it seems like this is about to happen and this is going to happen. Okay, so this is Second Ezra 15. I'm going to go to 16. It says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So, you know, Yahweh puts, puts these words in our mouth because the scriptures say that Yahweh chose us. We don't choose him. Okay? The Lord chooses us. We don't choose him. Okay? It says, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful. Cause them to be written in paper, for they are uh, faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee, that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful, unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, said the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. So swore, famine, death, and destruction, those are the plagues that's going to be, you know, put uh, on the world. But in particular, uh, America, okay? In particular, America, because this is the most wicked <clears throat> kingdom. This is the most wicked generation of people ever, okay? And it's all mingled here in America, okay? It says, uh, it says for wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. And scriptures tell you in Job, Job 9, 27, it tells you the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. And scriptures also tell you if the king is wicked, the people will be also. So guess what? The kings of this world, the world is given into the hands of the wicked, right? And they're the kings of the, the world. Guess what the people are going to be? They're going to be wicked. Okay, it says, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Okay, the souls of the just complain continually. Why? Because of all the BS that go on in this world. Okay, it says, And therefore said the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people was led, to the, led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. So Egypt is getting ready to be smitten with plagues as before. Now, this is not talking about ancient Egypt. This is talking about America, which is spiritually called Egypt, Sod Egypt and Sodom, okay, or Sodom and Egypt, and also called the virgin daughter of Babylon, Babylon or Babylon the Great. Right, this place has many names because it represents many different kingdoms. But when you hear this, right, anytime you hear Egypt getting destroyed, right? Anytime you hear Egypt getting destroyed, well, not anytime, but when you hear Egypt getting destroyed, especially in uh, you know, Second Ezra or Revelations and chapters like that, that's talking about this place. Okay, it says Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten. With the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. <clears throat> uh, let me go to fifteen. It says, "For the sword, for the sword and their destruction draw nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in the hand." So that's getting ready to happen, man. Okay, we see all the madness that's going on with the whole president election thing. This is this is this is getting ready to crank up. This is sixteen. It says. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another, 
right? They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Okay? It says, and so they ain't gonna regard, they don't care who a rulership. Okay, these people are gonna go straight berserk. It's gonna be all out chaos. Okay, it says, A man shall desire to go in the city and should not be able. For because of their pride, so this is why the destruction is coming. It says, For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid, and men shall have no pity upon his neighbor. So a man is not gonna have no pity upon his neighbor. Okay, it says, But shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and great tribulation. So that's what's to come, man. You know, a famine, great destruction. You know, and we do this word to hopefully be protected, man. You know, so that we might receive salvation. Okay. I'm going to go down to 21 and read 22. It says, like as they do yet this day unto my chosen. Right. The chosen is the one that's complaining, complaining. That just few that was complaining. That complained about the unrighteousness of this place, that's the, that's that's who the most high is gonna fight for. Okay, it says, and recompense in their bosom, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, my right hand shall not spare the sinners, my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood blood upon the earth. Okay, and guess who shed the innocent blood upon the earth? Esau, the top heathen. Man, these few these heathen has proven over and over and over and over again how they feel about us. It's not gonna stop, man. It's not as deeply embedded in them to, to, to be programmed to how they think. So to think that you can unprogram a demon is totally insane. Okay? Let me go over. I'm going to skim through a couple of, couple of these highlighted precepts I got. This is second Ezra sixteen. I can start at eleven. It says the Lord, the Lord uh, shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten the powder at his presence. The earth quaketh and the foundations thereof. The sea arises up and with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also before the Lord and before the glory glory of his power for strong is the right hand that bended the bow his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot to the ends of the world so those arrows are talking about what those arrows are talking about those nukes we always bring it out because that's the end all be all for this place that's the end all destruction for this place it says behold the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth the fire is kindled, which the fire is started, is, is another word for saying that. And shall not be put out till it consume the foundations of the earth. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. He said, woe is me, woe is me, who would deliver me in those days? The, listen to this. The beginning of sorrows, the beginning of mournings, the beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these these evils shall come? Okay, so he was worried. It's Edris is back today, you know. He was worried, you know what I mean? Because the things that he was saw, the things that he was seeing, you know, was all out chaos. It was not peace, peace, peace. It was not peace. You know, it was a lot of death, famine, destruction, a lot of things going on. Okay, it's 21, it says, Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon earth, swore famine and great confusion. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape shall the hunger, the like that escape the hunger, the sword shall, uh, shall the sword destroy. So the sword is going to destroy those who escape the hunger. Okay, because... The ultimate sword is nuclear missiles, right? So, mind you, right, that when a missile touched down, you're talking about 200 million of them, right? 200 million. When 200 million missiles touch down, ain't going to be nothing left in America, nothing left. It's going to be a, a pool of fire, okay? A pool of fire, okay? Everything evaporated, okay? But this is going to be that, 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 that nation. This is going to be that place because they were, this place was supposed to use 
Every other nation was supposed to use Sodom and Gomorrah as an example. This is going to be another place, right, where that's going to be used as an example. Okay, when you live unrighteous, this place is going to be used as an example and it's gearing up to be that. That's why this book is a book of prophecy. It's gearing up to be that. This place is going to be that place because nobody ever going to be able to, ha uh, to dwell here no more because of the wickedness of this place. I mean, the pure wickedness of this place, man. Okay, from women, family, friends, children, whatever. You know, this place got it got something coming. It got a great, it got a great surprise coming for that. Ad. Okay. Let's see, was there anything else I can grab on this? I encourage you, brothers, to read Second Ezra fifteen and sixteen. Um, it, it gives you, you know, a little bit of tips about what's to come. Okay, it tells you what's to come. All these, this whole chapter is good, but you know, I'm gonna end it there. I think my point was made. I'm going to end it there. Um, low willing videos, edifying, low willing brothers got something for this video. Um, I want to give all praises to you. How about Hashimi? I was shy for giving me the spirit to do this video. I want to tell you, brothers, keep pushing. I want to say Shalom. I can't say Shalom.